What School Won't Tell You, Lesson 6, The Psyche. Hi guys. In past episodes, we have shown that very highly evolved human beings are able to focus their thoughts through meditation to move objects, view past or future events, and much more. But how do these energies of the thoughts actually work? Why can highly evolved people like Billy Meyer and the Play Aran perform telepathy without any loss of time across the whole universe, even into other dimensions? Why do humans truly live in three time planes? These are some of the mysteries we want to uncover today. In our last lesson, we talked about the endless permanent becoming, passing, and becoming again of the creation the initial expansion speed of the creation, and therefore, our universe traveled at a light constant of 44,069,497.5 kilometers per second. However, that value has decreased due to the half value reduction from the Big Bang about 46 trillion years ago to our present day light speed. That is 299,792.5 kilometers per second. This means that at the time of the Big Bang of the universe, the expansion speed of the material creation was 147 times faster than today's speed of light. This goes to show that the universal light constant is always changing until someday it will shrink to such minimum values, causing the contraction to start so that the universe and the creation will begin to collapse again. That concludes the expansion regarding the material realm. When it comes to the spiritual, that is the creation energy realm, the original expansion speed of 44,069,497.5 kilometers per second remains the same and does not decrease at all. But the actual creation energy speed itself, however, is independent of the expansion speed. Because it is much higher, it travels at 10 to the power of 7,000 times the speed of light. This incredibly high creation energy speed is essential for all aspects of existence because without it there would be no life energy or creation energy which represents the life force for everything and anything existing within the creation. This cosmic electromagnetic life energy runs through the entire universe at 10 to the power of 7,000 times the speed of light. This energy is the actual life substance of any life form and any matter and it is purely creation energetic electromagnetic in nature. The whole universe is impregnated with this energy form. Therefore, any life form and any matter absorbs this energy form in itself in order to be able to exist out of it. In every life form there is a filigree fine creation energy web which permanently absorbs the creation energetic electromagnetic life energy from which this creation energy web, thus the creation energy form, lives which in turn causes the material body to become viable. But since the creation energy extends into the material consciousness as a form of the thoughts of the material consciousness, it is easy to explain that the speed of the creation energy thoughts attain 10 to the power of 7,000 fold light speed as well, while the material thoughts reach but a regular speed of light. However, the creation energy-based thinking still remains closed to the earth humans at this time. His evolution of consciousness is so deficient that the majority of earth humans is still not yet able to fully attain the material thought speed of the light constant, that is 299,792.5 kilometers per second. 
This light speed thinking is also the reason why it is possible for humans to experience days or weeks worth of dreams during a sleep period of just a few minutes. At this point, it is important to exactly define some terms, since today's languages have unfortunately been falsified and human beings of Earth have adopted the unpleasant habit of using false word concepts for things and matters, which they do not understand or only partially understand. This is also true for the terms spirit and consciousness, in which case the consciousness also represents the actual personality of a human being, which is usually falsely referred to as spirit. Thus there is no such thing as spiritual property, spiritual illness, spiritual confusion, spiritual derangement, spiritual injury, spiritual deficiency, etc., for in these cases one would always have to refer to the consciousness. It is, however, very well possible that the material consciousness gets confused or otherwise damaged and therefore must be referred to as a confusion of consciousness or a consciousness inadequacy or something along those lines. The spirit, that is the creation energy form itself, on the other hand, can be neither sick nor confused nor disturbed, deranged or faulty in any way. It is the minute part of the creation energy in human beings which animates them and which in no form can be disturbed or somehow negatively affected by the material realm. The utilization of this part of creation energy in human beings opens up possibilities undreamt of because the same laws of creation take effect in them as they do everywhere in the creation with its seven universes. Occultists and various scribblers, however, did not merely dream up confusing terms and other nonsense regarding the creational energy form and the material consciousness, for since ancient times both the psyche and the gamut have been referred to as factors which represent reality in no way whatsoever. Hence the psyche is described as soul, which supposedly continues to exist and function as a flying fluidal body after the death. Especially through religions, but also thanks to various occult circles, this nonsense is still widely propagated today, through which the human beings of Earth continue to be led into confusion. In our last video, we have learned that the positive and the negative each form a unit in themselves. However, their union creates a circumstance of tension and forms a unit yet again. This is a fundamental law of the creation which is reflected everywhere including the psyche. Psyche is referred to as that half-material block and factor which, within the material body of a life form, in this case the human being, regulates and looks after the material consciousness-based feeling and the material consciousness-based thoughts in itself in negative or positive consequence, from which results a negative or positive unequalizedness or a neutral positive equalizedness through which human beings are then simply negatively or positively unequalized or neutral positively equalized. To be positively or negatively unequalized means for the psyche to be oscotet in one or the other form while neutral positively equalized means that an equalizedness exists in the psyche, consisting of equal values of negative and positive, through which no asotan toward the negative or the positive steps forth, but simply an equality and with that an equalized harmony. For the German term Gemüt, there is no English translation, and it is used in a way that is just as wrong. In today's use of language, it represents the factor of the physical body, which is supposed to process and reflect the emotional life. But this is fundamentally wrong, because the Gemüt has no connection to the material body. 
Gamut can be seen as a counterpart to the psyche because it handles the same tasks, however exclusively in the creation energetic realm as opposed to the material consciousness realm. Gamut is referred to that creation energy block and factor which, within the creation energy body of a life form, in this case the human being, regulates and looks after the creation energetic consciousness-based feelings and the creation energetic consciousness-based thoughts in itself in a constant equalized form. Contrary to the psyche, the gamut of the creation energy realm cannot be influenced by negative powers, for it is part of the creation energy consciousness block that cannot be harmed as previously mentioned. So it is only influenced by neutral positive thoughts, which therefore means that only powers corresponding to an equalized form of positive and negative penetrate into the gamut, through which the gamut always exhibits an equalized harmony from which the half-material psyche again profits to a certain extent because the gamut supplies it with harmonious swinging waves in necessary amounts in which case a part of these swinging waves originate from the realm of cosmic electromagnetic life energy. Mentality is referred to as that half-material block and factor which according to human understanding and in common everyday language is often wrongfully assigned to the gamut. So mentality includes the constitution, the heart's attitude, the feeling and inclination, disposition, matters close to the heart, mood, mindset, temperament, irritability, receptivity, phlegm, melancholy, optimism and pessimism, and much more. This mentality block, however, is not only of half-material, but also of creation energetic nature, as it occurs both in the material realm as well as in the creation energy realm. That means that only the neutral positive form of the mentality exists in the creation energetic realm, while in the material realm, both negative and positive, as well as the neutral positive balance factors of the mentality exist. The term mentality, therefore, includes the entire feeling, emotional, consciousness personality and the psyche life of human beings, in which the direction of thought and the education, the world of desire, the world of instinct, and the world of impulse, the attitude and direction, etc., are also anchored. In total, this makes up the consciousness attitude and the personality attitude of human beings, from which the relationship to reality and to fantasy arises, as well as to individual and collective behavior. It is therefore evident that mentality has nothing to do with the gamut, but really just with mentality, which as a consciousness personality direction embodies a person's essence and constitutes human being as a human being. Feeling is referred to as that block and factor of the half material psyche, which creates the feeling and conveys it to the consciousness. This factor contains in itself the entire palette of feelings a human being and every other life form is capable of, in which case, however, the level of evolution forms the most definitive guideline of how many and of which feelings the human being is capable. The entire block of all feelings and their possibilities encompasses vastly many more impulsations, etc., than are presently known to the human being. The evolution of the human beings of Earth is still too low that they could become conscious of all feeling-based impulsations. The feeling bears no relationship to the feeling's touch of anything, body and objects, warmth and cold, as this feeling of touch is solely and exclusively of a purely material nature whereas the feeling of the half-material psyche itself is a form of the half-material, as is also the case of the mentality block as well as with the Infundungs block. So the feeling of this form does in no way coincide with the feeling of the touch of an object, or when there is no more feeling in the fingers or feet. The feeling emerges from the psychic realm, 
also includes the presentiment of the inspiration of the subconsciousness like foreboding, sadness or desire and displeasure, tension and release, excitement and relaxation, to the condition of the physical body, the influences of the weather, the climate and the environment, the understanding and non-understanding of all things, knowledge and wisdom as well as logic and thus to the thinking of the material consciousness. And just the thinking of the material consciousness is of decisive importance for the formation of the feelings, which represent the basic phenomenon of the subjective and individual experience for the human being. However, this experience cannot be grasped directly and consequently eludes the human understanding if he does not know the laws and commandments of the creation energy teaching, which also provide clarity in these still mysterious matters, but are, due to evolution, still locked to him at this time, because earth humans do not care about the creation energy teaching, but prefer to adhere to erroneous religions instead. The forms of the feelings and the way they are handled in everyday life always depend on one's evolution. Because the less humans have advanced in their evolution, the more uncontrolled their thoughts and feelings will be, and hence their emotions. But if humans are further evolved, then they will strive to have better control of their feelings and use them in accordance with their higher evolution, which will form their material consciousness their mentality which can be seen as an imprint of the consciousness and thus as personality. The infundin can be seen as the counterpart to the half-material feeling. Infundin is referred to as that block and factor which occupies that important position in the creation energy realm, in the gamut, as does the feeling in the half-material psyche. That means that the infundin is a purely creation energy process of the creation energetic gamut and that this does not belong to the physical body. The infundin only receives swinging waves which are of a purely creation energy energetic nature and thus in the creation energetic sense of a neutral positive equalized form. The Infindungen are as manifold as the feelings except that the Infindungen are simply pure and of only neutral positive equalized form. This goes to show that earth science has it all wrong as they interchange Gefühl and Infinden which is pure nonsense, as the gefühl is of material consciousness nature, while the infantin's influence extends primarily to the creation energetic mentality block, as well as to the half-material psyche. In the material everyday life, the infantin expresses itself as the most intensive sensitivitat, which results from the forces of the transmitted infantungen from the creation energy realm. Only through this Feinfühligkeit is it possible for humans to grasp things and realms which can only be grasped through the forces of the creation energy. But this will only become available to humans as sensitivity through the transmission into the semi-material psychic feeling realm. Sense is referred to as that block and factor which, in the half-material realm of the psyche and of the consciousness, receives, regulates, and brings the half-material as well as material perceptions into effect in the form that quite distinct feeling outbursts emerge, of which one can speak of as sensitized feeling swinging waves. The sense enables the material organism the receptivity of the stimuli of the five senses, seeing, hearing, smelling, tasting, touching. In addition, the sense is also the capability of each perception of the psychic feeling-based realm, wherein the capability to perceive all matters and processes of the material consciousness is also included. The sense processes that which is perceived into different types of swinging waves, out of which arise distinct sense conditions, which mix with specific feelings, again from which emerge quite specific impressions and excitabilities, as well as directions, progressions, and goals, emotions, the so-called sixth sense, clairaudience, desires, visions, clairvoyance, and many other values or unvalues. 
On the one hand, the sense serves as the cognition and also the evolution, while on the other hand, it can also bring disadvantages to humans if they are not controlled by the sense in a determinative and sufficient form. The sense is not only dependent on the humans themselves as such, but also on the outer world and the environment. Thus, the sense stimulations are not only triggered by the outer and inner conditions of humans themselves, but also from the outside by fellow human beings, by events and world situations, by music and all other muses, as well as by what is seen and heard. The energies of the creation energetic as well as the material consciousness realm are made up of electromagnetic swinging waves. These swinging waves pass through all barriers and obstacles and cannot be blocked except by energies aligned with them. The nuances between these energy forms are manifold. The creation energetic electromagnetic life energy, for example, differs from the electromagnetic swinging waves or energies of material nature. The creation energetic electromagnetic energies are so fine fluidal in their nature that they cannot yet be revealed with equipment existing on Earth at our present time. They are omnipresent nonetheless and can influence humans both negatively and positively, depending on the specific energy and its potential. Swinging waves or energies can also linger in objects or spheres, compound and then transfer unbelievable amounts of power to a medium that opens up to them. Usually this causes misfortune and catastrophes, or the human beings afflicted by these energies fall into confusion and commit murders, mass murders, and other atrocities. As you can see, the energies or swinging waves are incredibly important for our existence and exert great influence on our lives. The ability to control these swinging waves allows humans to accomplish things that appear fantasy-like at this time. Telepathy, levitation, teleportation are possibilities which are perfectly available to humans with a sufficiently evolved consciousness. Occasionally, telepathy appears even today, but mostly in state research facilities or in misguided esoteric circles or even in popular TV shows where they are elevated to something extraordinary, which they are really not. Yes? Yes. Seven? Yes. And a five. I can't believe how she can do this. All these phenomena are only the initial steps toward the primary telepathy or primitive telepathy. That's a four. This is the simplest form of telepathy whose origin lies in the material consciousness. There are innumerable forms of telepathy, such as psyche telepathy, gemut telepathy, infindungs telepathy, but also non-human life forms such as animals and plants practice forms of telepathy. All forms of life which possess any material form of consciousness are able to develop and utilize a form of telepathy corresponding to their respective consciousness. When it comes to the primary telepathy, the thought receiver hears the voice of the thought emitter practically in his head. Life. Creation. But he is not able to analyze where in his head the voice actually becomes audible. It is important that the sender person focuses strongly on the receiver person because otherwise the message could be scattered in an uncontrolled way and unintentionally reach many individuals. During the first phase of the primary telepathy, the reception of messages occurs through the human ear, which acts as a receiving antenna. As soon as humans increase their telepathy skills, they are able to gradually absorb larger energies into the material consciousness via the cerebral cortex. As they are able to improve, the material consciousness itself finally assumes this task, so it's eventually possible to send telepathically directly from one material consciousness to another. 
Since we are only talking about the material consciousness, the primary telepathy does not exceed light speed, that is 299,792.5 kilometers per second. So it is impossible to communicate across long distances, like beyond the Earth, through this very primitive form of telepathy. Because on the one hand, these swinging waves do gradually diminish, and on the other hand, any communication with the 500 light year remote Pleiaren would last 500 years in one direction and require another 500 years for the answer back. So if various Earth people claim they are in telepathic contact with the Pleiaren, it is a flat-out lie. So how does Billy call the Pleiaren telepathically, or access the stored contact conversations, so he can write them down for us? Billy is the only person on Earth who is able to use the very advanced creation energy telepathy. The human creation energy form operates at absolute maximum speed when using the creation energy telepathy because in all seven belts of our DERN universe, as well as in interstellar space and in the atmospheres, any creation energy swinging waves flows at 10 to the power of 7,000 times the speed of light. When it comes to the pure creation energy telepathy, the thoughts are formed by the humans quite consciously in their material consciousness and are thus shaped by their individual personality. However, these thoughts are not sent out but are passed on to the material subconsciousness. This then transmits the message intended for the creation energy telepathy in transformed form as impulses to the creation energetic subconsciousness which again transforms the received impulses into creation energy symbol pictures, which are then passed on to the creation energetic consciousness. The creation energetic consciousness then sends out these symbol pictures with immense power at 10 to the power of 7,000 times the speed of light, activated out of the creation energetic subconsciousness, which was activated again out of the material subconsciousness and this out of the material consciousness. Apart from its unimaginable speed, the creation energy telepathy also allows the sending of scents and taste as well as sounds and tones and still many other things of creation energetic nature which can be perceived by humans only in the pure creation energetic realm. This is possible as there are no limits to the communication through the creation energy telepathy with its 52 million creation energy symbol pictures. Unfortunately, an incredible amount of time will need to pass before we Earth humans will begin to develop those skills. But our goal should not be the simple desire to accomplish fantastic feats, but to build up a good evolution of the consciousness, self-knowledge, as well as a worthy ethos to attain intellect and rationality and to live in harmony, peace, and equalizedness according to the laws of creation. There are plenty more interesting facts we could touch upon, but that would more than exceed the scope of this video. However, you can find more information in Billy's book, The Psyche, as well as his numerous other writings and of course, the Creation Energy teachings. Subscribe to our channel for more interesting topics and click on the bell if you want to be informed about our latest releases. So see you in our next episode when we will once again reveal many interesting facts worth knowing. What school won't tell you? <laughs>